Hello there, fellow drunkards and addicts. In the first vid, I talked a little bit about uh, the ins and outs of why we think taking something as nasty as alcohol under our bodies is a fun, pleasurable thing. Uh, I also talked about how two things can be married into one by association. It's why we think being drunk with our head in this toilet, puking our guts up, praying to God that we can survive it, and then going out three days later doing the same thing is a pleasurable, exciting thing to brag about. Uh, then I talked about why is it so important uh, for us to become drunk. Uh, naturally, I'm going to be going to the Book of Enoch uh, a lot in these talks. And you don't know much about the Book of Enoch because it's not in your Bible. Even though the Bible professed that Enoch was so perfect in what he taught that God wouldn't suffer him death and he was basically transfigured off this planet, for somehow reason, he's not in our book. I'm hunting, by the way, so I'll be looking around at my lanes as I'm talking. Uh, the Book of Enoch gives us a very clear picture Though at first reading, it may not seem clear. But that being said, there are these beings that the book of Enoch as well as the Bible talks about. Known as the fallen ones or the watchers. Uh, same beings. And they were basically created. Now, this I'm going to get back. I'm going to have to stray to go back to the deep past, but we're still talking about booze and dough. And I'm going to talk about in this video how these things tie together. But there are these beings that God created for the sole purpose of maintaining the axis of this world, which means basically to keep this world running. This world is nothing more than a garden. That's why we talk about the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Souls. That's why the terminology from tillers and soils and the planting of wheats and tares, God is a great gardener. And because God is a spirit, he is actually planting and raiding and multiplying and growing these beautiful, gorgeous souls of light. That's what he wants to garden. These beings God created called the Watchers were basically, we call them the Watchers because they watched over us. They had certain knowledges. God gave them, created them with certain knowledges and understanding of how the world worked, how the, how the planets enacted with each other uh, for the plan, how uh, just all these types of really cool knowledges that were better off man not knowing, but better off them knowing it. So things could be maintained in this garden, that the souls could continue on their growth uh, pattern to where we could keep on producing those souls of light. Now, that being stated, uh, I forget the names of these guys, but they got uh, almost comic book arch villain sounding names like Azrael and stuff like that. But uh, the leader of these guys, he looked down on the daughters of Noah, as the uh, Bible states even, and they thought them fair, which means they uh, they desired them. They thought they thought the whole process of the garden was so cool they actually wanted to be planted into the garden themselves, and they wanted to intermingle and be part of it, because you know to them it looked like a beautiful garden of Eden back at the time, and they wanted to be a part of this thing in ways other than just being helpmates to the inner workings of uh, the galactic uh, uh, aspects of how all this thing works together. So the Bible states, as well as the Book of Enoch, that these things came down and began to marry with women. Jesus himself spoke of our end time generation, saying that in the days of the end, it's going to be as the days of Noah, who was Noah, and women are going to be given and taken in marriage with the giants. Now, I'm not going to try to rush through this too fast because I've already tried to make this video three times because I'm trying to put too much into one video. So I'm going to try just to take a little bit of this at a time. 
and try to and it may not make sense when I finish this video but the videos after this should be able to time together hopefully it's a very hard thing to put into words but very important if we want to understand why we're all drunks these things came down and married into the garden the, the fruit of this world the daughters of uh, Noah now the book of Enoch talks about a punishment that God was going to have for them and they knew that because they themselves talked about this punishment before they committed the act and they even asked uh, uh, Enoch to intercede for them and plead their case almost as a court of law and to, uh, to defend them in fact he says somewhere isn't it your job to defend me to God instead of me defending you but anyway it didn't work God gave them a punishment their punishment was that their souls of everything that would come from them on this garden would not be allowed to be in the spiritual process they would not be allowed to, to enter the heaven state they would not be allowed to leave this earth it talks about being put in this pit and these millions of stones being placed on them as if to draw you the picture of the weight of the world on them holding them down to this earth unable to leave and that scared these beings souls gotta fly right so when they came and married into women and when most people read this they this is where people start losing faith in the Bible especially young people because now we're talking about giants now we're talking about uh, all these things that make really good cool movies that the world can accept as long as this is a movie made by an Illuminatist uh, this trying to give you their ending and their knowledge we can accept them but when the Bible tells you much of the same things we start to ah, that's crazy no woman in her right mind would marry something that came from outer space because the books specify that these things would not be born through one in other words they weren't one of us they wouldn't come through the waters which is the waters of the belly when a woman is pregnant she's filled with waters and these babies are growing in this water and they're they're now assigned to a body they wouldn't do that they came by other means now we know that the Bible states that women married these guys well women aren't so different now as they are then and I don't mean God seeking women I mean women of the world basic generally women of the world like to marry who and what they like to marry rich guys they like to marry guys with power makes them feel secure they like the idea of the big house they like the idea of the travels all over the world and they like the idea of being a big shot so women like to look for a big shot uh, women in general not God's seeking women but women in general so don't be offended that being said could you look the other way for power and money if it was a space alien you had to marry if it was a something from outer space that didn't look like you wasn't created like you so different than you do you see that today as Christ professed it was going to be in the end times of course not these women were given and taken with marriage with people who looked exactly like them because it was them these watchers came down in spirit they infiltrated bodies of men men they knew what set these men apart was the knowledges that were now inside of these men the old secrets the mystery schools of uh, knowledges all these things that these these spirits brung to these men these men many of them don't even know these spirits around them in fact I would have to say most of them don't these spirits empowered these men to become giants because now they know how to do things the book states the book of Enoch states the first thing that these spirits did was teach these people on earth things 
The first thing he taught them was how to make booze. Bing, there we go. That ties into the who, what, when, and why. And it has to do with their punishment. Taught them how to make booze. Then they taught them how to make, uh, I forget what the word used, but if you look it up in the, you know, what it means, it means strong liquor. Anything I think over 90% if memory serves. Uh, next thing they taught them how to do was the cutting of roots. When you look that up, wouldn't you know it, the cutting of roots means to make dough, plain and simple. It opened up doorways for the farmer seers of things. They could see things of the farmer world. That's where they got the word in the Bible calls them the farmer seers. Where we get our word today, the pharmacies. That's where the word comes from. Because they're making, they're cutting roots still today. You take a root, you cut it, you chop it up, and you grind it into a, with a pencil and mortar, into a powder, to a paste. You smear it on a flat rock. You let the sun dry it. Scratch it back off of that rock. Bing, bada, bing. You got a powder. You snort that powder. Put it in your food. Put it in a drink. And you're high. Whatever the drug, particular plant is you're looking for. Sure, it's medicine. It heals us. But that's just a, uh, uh, a mainstay to keep this whole act of pharmacia going. So they taught these beings to do these things, which the men... It was the men's hands who were doing these things, teaching other men. But it was the spirit, those fallen ones that came down, that were placed into those men who were in charge of their bodies and control of their bodies doing these things. Now, when you have the power to make booze and you have the power to make dope and you have the power to make armor uh, for war, which means when you had a clash with another tribe, you became a very powerful individual. You became a giant. Because their money and all the fruits of their labor would come to you so they could get from you what you were providing them with, which was booze, dope, armor, all the things. Let me ask you this before I end this video. I'll see I'm already at the 12 minutes. Let me ask you this. You see giants today? When you read that in the book about giants, we're all going looking for these giant skeletons, which you're never going to find. They tell you, they show you these cool pictures, but they're never going to find giant bones or skeletons of men. Well, I say never. I shouldn't. Hell, I don't really know that. But my point is, the giants of that day is the same giants of today. Anheuser Busch is your giant. The guy that you send your car note, house note all your bills off to, your utilities, they're your giant. Go tell them you're not going to, tell the IRS you're not going to pay uh, your tax bill. Watch how fast they become a giant in your life. They're the same giants among us today, just like Christ said it would be. That were back in that time. Women to this day still want to marry those people, give and take with those people. Uh, today just like they did yesterday they want power they want money they want securities they want the biggest house on the hill they want the yacht the helicopters all the trappings that goes with it and I don't say that lightly trappings it is trapping so that's as far as I'm going to go in this video about about how the whole giant thing and the fallen angels how this whole alcohol and drug problem is derived specifically from that from the beginning. It's the oldest writings we can find that talks about the drinking. So it, therefore the root, it's the growth, every, everything that we're suffering from today is grown from that. The book also talked about the giants, which was a likeness going to happen then as it's going to happen today. They got so big and so uh, hungry, their appetite became so huge. The people, all they did was try to satisfy these giants' hunger. Isn't that what we're doing today? Making sure that Anheuser Busch stays going strong, giving all of our money to the casinos, to the booze makers, to the giants of the world, be they food companies, be they whatever, because they own just about everything now. We're trying to feed them constantly. Well, that book also talks about these giants starting eating the people, and then they start devouring each other. We're talking about a collapse here talking about the insatiable thirst and hunger of these things becoming so strong that they actually start devouring themselves. Don't let your flesh brain take you to 
this giant physically eating, biting the heads off of little G.I. Joe sized people. We're talking about instead of owing a bank $60 a month, now we owe them $1,200 a month. They're consuming us with all the fruits of our labor, everything that we make, they consume us today just not as they did then. Okay, that's as far as I'm going to go now. Uh, stay tuned, as they used to say, for video three, where we're going to get back into the inner workings of how the booze and the dope works on our minds to serve those giants and do what they want us to do. So thank you for taking a listen to this video, and uh, adios for now.